In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to make these procedural egg materials. So in this video, we'll be creating these two different egg materials. So this egg shell material and then this fried egg material. And then we'll also be joining the material together into custom node groups so that you can control the materials. So the first one is the egg shell. And for this one, we have the overall scale to change the size of the material. Then we have two different colors for the egg. So we have egg color one and then also egg color two. And egg color two is gonna control more of the dots color on the egg and then egg color one is going to control more just the main color so you could make it more of a white color if you want like a white egg or if you want a brown egg just leave it at that brown color and then also we have the roughness of the material and then also the surface bump strength now another cool thing about this eggshell material is that whenever I duplicate this egg, it is going to randomly be generated as different colors. As you can see, some of these eggs are darker and then other eggs are lighter. And so this way, if you duplicate the eggs and maybe you have an egg carton or a basket of eggs, each egg is gonna have a slightly different color. So some will be lighter and other eggs will be darker. And then we also have this fried egg material. And so for this, we have the overall scale of the material. Now the overall scale of the material isn't that useful because it's really going to depend on the size of the object that you're adding the material onto. You can see the scale kind of messes up the material, but we also have some other settings to control like the noise scale to change the surface noise. And then we have the bubble scale. So right here on the egg whites, you can see there's just some little bubbles here and there on the surface. So you can change the bubble scale with this value. And then the egg yolk has a gradient. And so here on the top, it is more yellow. And then down here on the edges, it is more orange. So the yolk color one and the yolk color two are going to change the gradient colors. And then we also have the egg whites color and I found that it actually looks more realistic if it is kind of more of a gray color and slightly brown. If it is fully white it just kind of looks blown out and too bright so I have it kind of like a lightish gray color. And then we also have the egg yolk size so you can make the egg yolk bigger if you want to and then we also have the egg yolk height. And then we have the roughness of the material. We also have the noise bump strength which will change the surface bump on the egg whites. And then we have the bubbles bump strength so you can kind of see those are where the bubbles are and then we have the displacement strength to actually change the displacement because you can see the displacement is actually going to pop out the egg yolk and if you'd like to purchase these procedural materials you can get them on my gumroad store and my patreon page and to purchase all of my materials you can check out my ultimate blender procedural material pack which comes with all of my procedural materials pre-set up for blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails sorted catalogs and customizable node groups you can also check out my procedural procedural material packs, which are packs of 10 materials. And you can also purchase all of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. Links are all in the description. So I'm just going to delete everything and then I'll go to the add menu and we're going to add the egg shell. So I'm going to go here to mesh and we're going to add a UV sphere. Now when modeling to the real life scale in Blender, the default objects are quite large. So I want to scale this to a better size. So I'll scale this down by a point 0.035, just a 0 0.035, hit enter. I'll hit the period on the numpad to zoom into the object. And I'll now press control A and just apply the scale. So this is the object's new default size. Let's also shade it smooth using the object context menu. So now I want to model this to look like an egg. So I'll go into edit mode and I'm going to select the top vertex. And then I'll click right here to turn on the proportional editing and I'll hit G to grab. And then I need to scroll my mouse wheel to scale down the proportional editing. Let's bring it up on the Z axis and then I can just scale the proportional editing by scrolling the mouse wheel. And I'll just bring that up kind of like that. So now you can see we have a nice shape of the egg. Let's turn off the proportional editing. So then back in object mode, I'm gonna press control one. Control one is just gonna add a subdivision surface modifier with one level. And let's also turn the render level to one. So now the egg is nice and smooth. Now for the fried egg, I'll go to the add menu and we're gonna add a new object. So let's add a cylinder and the object is really big. So let's scale it down. I'm gonna scale it down to a 0 0.07 and just hit enter. And then I'll zoom into this object and I'll press control A and again, I'll just apply the scale. So I'll now hit the tab key to go into edit mode and I'm gonna scale this object down on the Z axis and I'll scale it down by 0 0.06. So 0 0.06 and hit enter, that's a better size. Then I'll add a loop cut by pressing control R. I'll left click, drag down here and then left click to place it a little bit farther down and I'll scale the entire thing up a little bit so that the edges will be more smooth and round. Let's also go back to object mode and I'm going to select the egg object and press H to hide it just to get it out of the way. And we'll select the fried egg again and go into edit mode. So because we're going to be using the displacements, I want more geometry for the displacements to use. So we're going to go to the face select 
and we're going to select this face and we're going to hit the I key to inset the faces. We're going to click there and just make the faces roughly a square and continue to hit the I key and just scale them down so they're about an even size and just continue to hit the I key until it's much smaller, kind of like that. And then let's also click here to go to the vertex select. I'll hold down the alt key and select that loop of vertices and I'll bring it down on the Z axis. Select that loop of vertices and bring it down on the Z axis just so that that's a little bit more smooth. So let's go back to object mode now and I'll use the object context menu to shade it smooth. And then I'll also press control three. Control three will add a subdivision surface modifier with three levels and we're gonna turn the render and viewport levels to three. So it is nice and smooth. So I'll now press seven on the numpad to go to top view and we're gonna go back into edit mode and I'll click here to turn on the proportional editing again. And I'm now gonna select some vertices. I'll just hit G to grab and I'm just gonna randomly move the vertices around just so that the fried egg kind of has a random shape and it's not perfectly round. Bringing some parts in and bringing some other parts out. All right, I'll turn off the proportional editing and go back to object mode. I'll press Alt H to unhide the objects and let's just move these objects over so that I can kind of see them a little bit better so they're not overlapping. Maybe even rotate the egg over. And then let's save this project. So I'm gonna click on file and I'll click on save as. And I'll just save this in my project files as egg and I'll click on save as, and you can press control S while you're working on the project to save it. Let's also add a camera. So I'll go to the add menu. Let's add a camera. And then you can just move your view to wherever you want the camera to be. And I'll press control alt numpad zero to bring the camera to our view. Let's also click here on the object data properties of the camera. And I'm gonna turn the focal length up to 70. So it's just zoomed in a little bit. Then if we click here on the output properties, I'm gonna change the resolution so that it is square. So I'm gonna make the X and Y resolution 1440 by 1440. And the percentage here, I'll turn that up to 200. Now that is a pretty large image, so you don't have to render it that big if you don't want to. I just want to render a really large image. Let's now press G to grab and we can move the camera around and then I'll hit G to grab and I can double tap the Z key to move the camera in and out. And we're just going to kind of stick it right there. Let's hold down the Z button and I'm going to move my mouse up into the rendered view and I'll press control B in the camera and I'll drag a box around the camera and let go. And that way it's going to add this render border so that it'll only render what the camera can see in the viewport. And also here on the rendering engine, I am using cycles render. And if you want to use the material displacements, then you will need to be using cycles because EV doesn't support material displacements. So let's now add some lighting. So let's click here on the world properties and I'm going to be adding in an HDRI from polyhaven.com and the link will be in the description to the HDRI that I'm using. So here on the color, let's click on the yellow dot here and then I can choose environment texture and then we'll click on open to open up the HDRI. And here's the HDRI that I'll be using from polyhaven.com. So it's the balcony HDRI and I downloaded the 1K version and the HDR version. So I'll click on open image. So this will give us some nice lighting. Now on the strength here, I want to turn this down to like a 0.5 so it's not quite as bright. And then also let's go here to the render properties and I'm going to go here to the film tab and I'll click on the transparent button so that you can't see the HDRI in the background. And then also on the color management here, I'm going to use the view transform of filmic and I'm going to change the look to very high contrast. So now I want to add one more light. I just want to add an area light to add some bright light in one direction because right now the lighting is kind of overcast and gray. So I'll go to the add menu. Let's go here to light and I can add an area light. I'll scale the area light way down and kind of rotate it up and bring it up right over here. And then if I go to the object data properties, I'm just going to turn the power to one. And because these objects are so small, we don't really need that large of a power. So just a power of one should look pretty good. So now we have some nice bright lighting there shining down on the object. So now let's create the eggshell material. So I'll select the eggshell or just the egg. Let's go over here to the shading workspace. I'll press zero on the numpad to go into the camera view and I'll go into the rendered view. And let's click on new to add a new material and I can just rename this to egg shell. And then I will also be using the node wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes. So to enable the node wrangler, you can click on edit and you can go to the preferences. And then over here on the add-ons tab, just go to the search and you can search for node wrangler and just enable the node wrangler add-on. So it's built into blender and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So we can close blenders user preferences. So for the base texture, I want to create some little dots. So I'm going to go to the add menu and we're going to search for a Voronoi texture. Let's drop the Vorno here. And then to use the feature of the Node Wrangler add-on, I can hold down the Control and Shift key and I can select different nodes. And that's gonna preview the node on the object. 
Now you can see that the dots are looking a little bit stretched. So if I select the Voronoi texture, I'm going to press Control T, and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And the texture coordinate is going to tell the texture how it's placed on the objects. And so I want to use the object coordinates, so we'll put the object into the vector. And then to see the Voronoi texture, we just need to turn the scale up. And now you can see that the Voronoi dots there aren't stretched because they're using the object coordinates. So now let's change some of the settings of the Voronoi. So for this scale here, I'm going to turn this up to like 8, 2000. So we have a bunch of really small dots. But then the other settings here, I'll just keep how they are. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I want to be able to duplicate the eggs and I want each egg to be a randomly slightly different color. So to do this, I'm going to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for the object info node. We'll place this here and the object info has this random value and the random value is going to randomly generate colors from white to black. Now to control those white and black colors, I can also go to the add menu and I can search for the mix color. Let's put this here. And then this random is going to go into the factor and the factor is determining what parts are going to be color A and what parts are going to be color B. So it'll randomly generate colors between A and B. So now here on A and B, we can make the two different colors that we want for the egg. So for color A, I'm going to make this kind of like a peachy, kind of light orangish color. And then for color B, I'm going to make this a similar color, but it's going to be a bit darker. And if you want to use the exact same colors that I'm using, then you can use the same hex values. So for color A, if you click on the color wheel here and go to the hex, you can punch in a hex value of CE744E. E. And then here on color B, if you go to the hex value, Value, you can punch in a 7, 5e, 40. So those are the two random colors. So if I control shift and select the mix to preview it, now if I press shift D to duplicate and kind of duplicate these, you can see that randomly each egg is going to be a different color. So that's very useful for duplicating the eggs and making them look organic and natural. Now I want to mix the Voronoi texture in with the base color. So what I'll do is go to the add menu and I'm going to search for another mix color and we'll drop the mix color in between these. And I want this Voronoi distance to be going into the factor. And then I want this mix result here to be going into color B. And let's control shift and select it to preview it. So now in color A here, I actually want this to be the same color as color B. So you can click and drag and you can actually drop the material from this color B here into color A. So now if I zoom in here, you can kind of see those little dots. Now I want to make the dots look a bit more contrasty. So I'm going to click and drag the box select these nodes and I'll drag them back a bit. And I'll now go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a color ramp and we'll put the color ramp between the Voronoi and the mix. So now I can take this white color and I can drag it over and you can see as I drag it over the dots are going to be more contrasty and they're going to be a bit smaller. So now we can take this mix result here and we can put that into the base color and I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. Now here on the roughness, I want to turn this down a little bit. So I'll turn it down to like a 0.4. So the egg is a little bit more reflective. Now I also want to put some surface detail into the normal, so let's put the color ramp color into the normal. But you can see there's some weird shading issues, and that's because we need to convert the color data into normal data that the shader can use. So I'll go to the add menu, and we're going to search for a bump node, and we'll put the bump node in this wire between the color ramp and the principal shader, and the color ramp color needs to be going into the height value, and now you can see it's converted to bump data. But it's way too strong, so on the strength value here, I'm going to turn it way down to like a 0 0.04, so it is very subtle. Now I also want to add just a little bit of noise all over the surface, so I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's drop the noise texture under the Voronoi, and I want to use the same object coordinates, so let's take the mapping vector and I can put that into the vector of the noise texture. And then we can change some of the noise texture settings, so I'm going to turn the scale to 100, also the detail here, I'll turn that up to the max of 15, and this roughness here, I'll turn that up to like a 0.6. If I control shift and select the noise texture, you can see what it looks like. So I now want to put the noise texture into the bump. So I can select this bump node, and I'll press shift D to duplicate it, and let's drop it here. And the noise texture factor, this can go into the height value of the bump. And then this bump normal can go into the normal of this bump. And so this way we're mixing two bump maps together. So I can now control shift and select the principal shader. And you can see there's just a tiny little bit of surface bump over the material. So that is it for the eggshell material, but we'll now be joining this together into a custom node group. So I'm going to click and drag to box select all the nodes except the material output. And I'll press control G to join it together into a node group. And if I hit the tab key with the node group selected, I can go in and out of the node group. 
So we'll drag the node group right over here. I can also make it longer and I can copy the eggshell name and paste it there into the node group. And you can see this says BSDF, but I want to rename that to shader. So I'll go back into the node group and I'm going to hit the N key to open the side panel. And right here on the group tab on the interface, I can double click on this and just rename that to shader. Now, right over here in the node group, we have this group input and we can plug values up to the group input to control them outside the node group. So I first want to control the overall size of the material. So this mapping is plugged up to all the textures. So this scale will control the size of the entire material. So we're going to take the scale from the mapping and we're going to put that into the group input. Now, if you click on the scale here, you can see that there's going to be three different values for the X, Y, and Z, but I want one value to control all the scale values. So to do that, we're going to click on the type and we're going to change it to float instead. And then the default value will turn that to one. And then if we go outside of the node group, we want to turn the scale value back to one. So now that can control the size of the material. So let's hit the tab key to go back into the node group. Now I also want to be able to control the colors, so we'll drag the group input right here, and I can take this first mix, color A, and I can put that into the extra socket there, and then I can double click on this and I can rename this to egg color 1, and then for egg color 2, these colors here are both the same color, so I thought it would be nice to plug them up to the same socket so that one value can control both colors. So let's put B into the extra socket, and then also A, we're going to put that into the same socket, and I can double click on this to rename it and I'll just rename that to egg color 2. And then I want to be able to control the roughness of the material. So let's take the roughness here from the shader and we'll put that into the extra socket. And then let's drag the group input down here. And for these bumps, we have the dots bump and then also the noise bump. So you could plug them up into separate values if you want to control them separately. But I thought it would be nice to control them both with one socket. And you can see the strength values are the same. So we'll put the strength value into the socket there. And then this strength value, we'll put that into the same socket. And then I can double click on this and I'll just rename it to bump strength. So let's hit the N key to close the side panel. Let's drag the group input back here and I'll hit the tab key to go outside of the node group. And we can just review this material. So we have the overall scale of the entire material. Then we also have the different egg colors. So egg color one is going to be like the main color. So if you want to make it more like a white egg, you could turn it more of a white color. And then egg color two, this is going to be the secondary color and it's going to have more control over the dots color. And then we have the roughness of the egg and then also the bump strength to change the surface bump. Let's press Control S to save the project. And I'm now going to click on the second object here and we'll make the fried egg. So let's click on new to add a new material. And I can just rename this to fried egg. So I first want to add a gradient. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a gradient texture. Let's drop this here and I can control shift and select the gradient texture to preview it. And then also with the gradient texture selected, I'll press Control T to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And let's plug the object into the vector. Now here on the gradient texture, I want this to be circular so that it starts out as that kind of yellow color and then becomes more orange. So let's click on the linear here and I'm going to change it to spherical instead. Now I'm going to click and drag to box select these two nodes and to organize them better, I'll press control J just to join them together into a frame. And if I press F2 with the frame selected, I can add a label and I'll just call this mapping and I'll drag the mapping down here. Now right up here on the gradient texture, I also want to have another mapping node which will control the gradient. But then this mapping will change the size of the entire material. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for another mapping. We'll put this behind this gradient texture. So now what I want to do is change the values to to change the size of the gradient. So on the mapping location Z, I'm going to turn this to a 1.4. And then I also need to change the scale. So I'm going to turn the X and Y scales both to a negative 19. And then also this one here, a negative 19. So just change that to negative 19. And then on the scale Z value, I want to make this a negative 155. So you can see by dragging the Z value, it's going to kind of bring that up there. And then also the scale X and Y will change the size going out on the X and Y axis and then the Z. And then also the location, I brought this up by 1.4 just to kind of bring the gradient up so you can see it a little bit better. So now you can see that we have that gradient texture for the egg yolk. Now, because these scale values here can control the size of the egg yolk, I want to be able to control these values later outside of the node group. But you can see there is just one scale value here or one scale socket to change the values. So to fix this, I'm going to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for the combine X, Y, Z. Let's drop this here. And then we want to copy the X, Y, and Z from this mapping. We want to put it on the combine X, Y, Z. 
So we'll copy this value by pressing Control C and then press Control V just to paste it and then also paste the Y and then hover your mouse over the Z and press Control C to copy and then Control V to paste. So now this vector can go into this scale and so now we're breaking up all three of the values and so we can control these later on in the custom node group. So let's box select these nodes here and I'll press Control J to join them together into a frame. And if I press F2 to add a label, I can rename this to yoke size. So the frame now says yoke size. So let's now use this gradient texture to make the base color. First though, I want to make it more contrasty because you can see there is a nice blending here, but I want to make it very sharp. So I'll go to the add menu and we're going to search for a color ramp and we'll put the color ramp here after the gradient. And then I can drag the black tab over and drag the white tab over. And I'm going to drag them over really, really close to each other so that it is very contrasty. So something like that, although maybe drag this back a little bit. It's a little bit bigger. So let's select these two nodes and I'll press Control J to join them together into a frame. I'll press F2 with the frame selected to add a label. And I'm just going to rename this to base color. So now what I want to do is click on this gradient and I'll press Control shift D. So Control shift D will duplicate the node, but it'll keep the wires plugged up. And then I can also press Alt P to bring it out of the frame. So then up here, we're going to make the yoke color. So I'll go to the add menu and to make the two different colors, I'm going to add a mix color node. Let's drop the mix color up here. And then this gradient texture color, that's going to go into the factor. So now here on color A and color B, we can make the two colors. So for color A, I'm going to make this like a bright red color. And then for color B, I'm going to make this a bright yellow color. And if you want to use the same exact colors that I'm using, then here on color A, this will be a little bit more like an orangey color. And the hex value for color A is going to be FB5100. And then for color B, this is going to be a hex value of FFD8. So now if I control shift and select the mix to preview it, you can see it's more orange here and then white here. So let's box select these nodes. I'll press control J to join them together into a frame and I'll add a label and I'm going to rename this to yoke color. So we now have this base color here and you can see this is actually going to be the factor of where it's going to be the yolk and where it's going to be the egg whites. And then here's the yolk color. So I want to mix them together. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for another mix color. Let's stick this here and I can take the mix result and I'm going to put that into color B and then this base color here, the color ramp, this is going to go into the factor because this is the mask and I can control shift and select this mix to preview it. So now you can see color A, this is going to be the color of the egg whites. So I'm going to make it kind of like a grayish color and just make it slightly yellow. And the exact color that I'm going to be using for the egg yolk is going to be a hex value of BA B092. And then I'll click and drag and drop this mix color here into the base color. So now we have the yolk color and then we have the final base color. So let's drag the principled shader back over here and I can take this mix result and let's put that into the base color of the principled shader. And then I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. Now also this roughness value here, I'm going to turn this down to a 0.3 so that the egg is a bit more shiny. So now let's make the displacement, which is going to make the egg yolk actually pop out of the mesh. So I'm going to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for noise because I do want to add a little bit of noise into the displacement. So let's drop the noise texture down here and then let's take this original mapping here, not the yolk size, but just this mapping. And we're going to put this one into the vector of the noise texture. And then let's control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. And I'll change some of the settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to 20. I'll turn the detail to the max of 15. And those are going to be the settings for the noise. So we're just going to add a little bit of noise into the displacement. Now I also want to mix this noise texture with the gradient texture so that it's actually going to pop out of the mesh. So I want to mix the gradient and the noise together for the displacement. So we'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for the mix color node. Let's drop the mix color here and on the mix type, I want to change this to the lighten. So right up here, choose lighten and then this noise texture factor, this is going to go into color B. Then we're going to take this gradient texture color from the base color and we're going to put this into color A and let's control shift and select it to preview it. So now you can see it's a little bit lighter there in the center. So now this lighten result can go into the displacement of the material output and I'm going to control 
control shift and select the principal shader to preview it. And then to actually turn it into displacement data, I need to go to the add menu and I need to search for the displacement node. And let's stick it here between the light tin and the material output. And then the light tin result needs to be going into the height value. Now you can see it's still not popping out the mesh, even though it does look bumpy. And that's because we need to open up the side panel and go to the material settings. And let's so open up the settings tab. And then under the surface on the displacement, we want to change the bump only to displacement and bump. So now you can see it's popping way up and that is way too strong. So I want to make it much less strong. So this mid-level here, I want to turn that to zero. And then also the scale, I want to turn this to like a 0 0.02 so it is quite small. You can see if I drag the mid-level, you can see the mid-level at default is a 0.5. But you can see at 0.5, you can see it's kind of like going through itself. So that's why I'm turning the mid-level to zero. Now I want to be able to change the shape of the egg yolk. So to do that, I'm going to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for the RG GB curves. And we'll put this in between the gradient and the light tin. So just stick it there. And then I can also box select all these nodes here. I'll press Ctrl J to add a frame. And with the frame selected, I'll press F2 and I'll rename this to displacement. So now let's change the RGB curves and the shape of the RGB curves is actually going to affect the yoke size. So let's click and drag here in the center to add a dot. And then this dot here, I can drag it way down. So now you can see it's going to come up and then go down and it's going to be the yoke shape. Let's also drag the yoke kind of over there. Now there's a problem with this and that is that there's just way too much noise and an egg yolk shouldn't look that noisy. So we can take this light in here and we can drag the factor so you can see if it's turned to zero, it's only going to use the gradient, but if I turn it up, it's going to add more noise. So I'm going to turn the factor to a 0.15, just a 0.15. So now you can see that there is just a little bit of noise on the surface, but it is quite subtle. Now there's another problem and that is that the color there, the egg yolk is coming out too far. So if we go up here to the base color, we can drag the color ramp here and that is going to change how contrasty it is. So we can just drag this and just fix that color. And then if this is happening for you where there's that little white spot on the top, what you need to do is go here to the RGB curves and you just need to drag this value down. So you can see this shape here is going to make the shape of the egg yolk. So if I drag it way up, it's like messing up that gradient. So I'm just going to drag it down, just bring it up as high as you want, but bring it up before it starts to show that white color. So maybe just something like that is pretty good. So it may be a little bit different depending on your object and the size, uh, but something like that looks better. Now also to make it look more realistic and to make it look more like food, I want to add some subsurface scattering. So let's go to this principled shader right here and we're going to open up the subsurface and then this weight here, I'm going to turn this all the way up to one. So now light is being allowed to go through the object. And then also here on this random walk, I want to change it to this first type here on the subsurf method, just because I think that looks a little bit nicer. So now you can see the object looks a bit more soft. It looks a bit more like food. All right. Now I also want to create a little bit of bump to the material. So let's click and drag the box, select all these nodes and drag them up here so we have more space and also drag this down. And for the bump, I want to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a mix color. Let's drop it here. And on the mix type, I'm going to change this to the light tin. Now what I want to do is add a bit of noise all over the material. However, I want the egg yolk to be more smooth. So what we're going to do is take this noise texture here and we're going to put this factor into color A and I can control shift and select it to preview it. But then we're going to use this color ramp as a mask. We're going to put the color into the factor of the light in, and this way that noise is only going to be visible where the whites of the eggs are. And then color B here, we're going to make this fully white. So now you can see that you can only see the noise around the sides. So then this light in result, this can go into the normal, but then to convert it to bump data, I need to go to the add menu and let's search for a bump node and I'll stick this here between the light and the normal. So just stick it there. So it converts it to bump data and I can control shift and select the principled shader to preview it. And one more thing that we need to do, we need to take the light tin result and we want to put that into the height value so it converts it to bump data. So now it's way too bumpy. So on the strength here, I'm going to turn it way down to like a 0.2 so it is more subtle. So let's select both of these nodes and I'll press control J to add a frame and we'll add a label to the frame and I'll call it bump. So now I want to create the bubbles. So I'll go to the add menu and we're going to search for a Voronoi texture for the bubbles. Let's drop this down here. Let me just make this a bit bigger so we have a bit more space. And this original mapping, that can go into the vector of the Voronoi texture. And I can control shift and select the Voronoi to preview it. And let's change some of the settings. So let's first turn the scale up so we can actually see the dots. And I want to make the size of the dots smooth. So on the F1 here, I'm going to change it to smooth F1 instead. 
Now here on the scale, I'm gonna change this to 140, and then I'll leave the other settings how they are. Now I wanna make the bubbles more contrasty so you can see them in smaller areas, and they're just gonna be smaller in general. So I'll go to the Add menu, and I'm gonna search for the Map Range node, and we'll drop the Map Range here after the Voronoi. Let's drag it over here. I can also select these nodes and join them into a frame. Add a label by hitting F2, and I can just rename these to bubbles. So then on the map range from max, I'm gonna turn this to a 0.22. So you can see by turning this up, you can see it's going to make it lighter and darker. So I'm just gonna change it to that value so that the bubbles are smaller. Now, I don't want the bubbles to be on the yolk, I just thought, want them to be on the whites. So I'm gonna go to the add menu, and I'm gonna search for a, another mix color. Let's stick this here after the map range. And then I wanna change the mix type to lighten instead. And then again, I'm gonna use this base color as a mask. So right up here on the base color, this color ramp here, this is going to go into color A. And then right back down here in the bubbles, this map range is gonna go into color B. So now I can turn the factor all the way up to one, and you can see that now it's gonna be white here because we're basically masking that out. And so you'll only be able to see the bubbles on the edges, but not on the egg yolk. So then let's click and drag to box select these nodes and bring them over. I can select this bump node and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it here after the first one. And so now this light and result here, this can go into the height value. And I can control shift and select the principled shader. Now here on the strength, I wanna turn this up a little bit, so I'll turn it up to like a 0.3. And if I zoom in here, you can see there's little bubbles. If I turn the strength way up, you can see how strong it is, but I wanna make it more subtle, so I'll leave it at a 0.3. All right, and that is it for the fried egg material. So let's now join it together into a custom node group. So I'll box select all these nodes except the material output. I'll press Control G to join it together into a node group. I'll hit Tab to go out of the node group, and I can drag the node group over here, and let's just drag it out to make it bigger and then I can copy the name and I can paste the name right here. So let's hit the tab key to go into the node group and I'll press the N key to open up the side panel and let's go to group and here on the interface I just want to rename this to shader. So now let's add all the custom values. So let's first drag the group input down here and we're going to take the scale and we'll put that into the extra socket and then again just like we did for the egg let's click on the scale and we'll change the type to float so it is one value. We'll turn the default value to one and then if we go outside of the node group, we'll turn the scale to one, and then we'll go back into the node group. Let's also control the noise scale. So if we go here to the displacement, we have this noise. Let's take the scale and put that into the extra socket. And I can rename this to noise scale. And then let's add the bubbles scale. So I'll drag the group input down here. Let's take the Voronoi scale, put that into the extra socket. And I can rename this to bubbles scale. And then let's add the colors. So I'll drag the group input right up here. And then let's first add the yolk colors. So I'll put A into the extra socket and B put that into the extra socket and we'll rename these to yolk color one and yolk color two and then also down here this base color mix we can put color a into the extra socket and i'm going to rename this one to egg whites color then i want to control the egg yolk size so i'll drag the group input down here be behind the yolk size and you can see we have an x and a y value to change the size of that so we're going to put both of these into the same new socket here so that they can be controlled by the same value and then I'll rename this to egg yolk size. And then I wanna control the egg yolk height, which is gonna be this value here. So let's put the Z into the extra socket here. And then I'll rename this one to egg yolk height. And then I wanna control the roughness of the material. So let's go over here to the principled shader. We can take the roughness value, pull out a wire and drag this all the way over here and stick it into the extra socket. And then I wanna control the bump strengths. So let's drag the group input like right over here. And so this one here, this is gonna control the noise. So we'll put the strength into the extra socket. And I can double click on this to rename it. And I'll rename this to noise bump strength. And then the second one here, put that into the extra socket. And this one is controlling the bubbles. So I'm gonna rename it to bubbles bump strength. And then I wanna control the displacement strength. So here on the displacement, we have the scale. So we'll put that into the extra socket here. And I'll click on this and rename it to displacement strength. All right, hit the N key to close the side panel. Let's drag the group input back over here. And I'll hit tab to go outside of the node group. And we can review this material. So we have the overall size of the entire material. We also have just the noise scale and also just the bubble scale. And then we have the different colors. So there's the egg yolk colors one and two. And if I drag this out to make it bigger, 
you can see the name. So this is also egg whites color. And I find that fully white kind of blows it out and makes it look less realistic. So that's kind of why it's this grayish color. Then we have the egg yolk size and the egg yolk height. And then we have the roughness of the material, the noise bump strength, the bubbles bump strength, and then the displacement strength. So that is it. That is how you create those egg materials. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to purchase these materials, you can get that on my Gumroad store and Patreon page. You can also purchase all of my materials by checking out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, which comes with all of my procedural materials. You can also purchase each one of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender Procedural Material Tutorial playlist. All the links are in the description. But I hope you found this helpful, I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for watching.